Gold bugs are getting squished a little bit. Phil Striebel joins me for a check-in on the precious metals and commodities. Blue Line Futures. Phil, thanks for being here this afternoon. Checked out your Gamma uh, oh. show yesterday. I caught it last night. Hit me with I the feedback. To... She was like, what are you watching? I'm like, everything you ever wanted to know about <laughs> options. So I thought it was really informational. I thought it was a really good thing thanks, I shared man. it with other people. So. I appreciate that, Phil. It's like the meme, yeah. you know, it's like, uh, oh, I wonder what he's thinking about, you know. He's awake on the other side of the bed. He's thinking about Gamma. <laughs> 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 so, all right, on the gold market, being serious here. So, crashing for the last five trading sessions, reaching the lowest level in seven weeks. Sell off partly um, technical base. We saw a breakdown below the 50 day moving average. You go since the election, we're down about 5.5%. We were down 2.5% yesterday, down a half percent here today. So, we did dip below 2,600, key psychological level. It did reject that. We were able to close back above 2600. The problem that gold's having right now, a couple things here. If you look back in 2016, uh, one week after the election, gold was down about 5%. So we're mirroring that right now. One month down about 4%. And then you go three months out, we were up 6.5%. So the tide had turned. So a lot of these people jumping into the dollar index, you know, higher yields, that's really what pressures the gold market. You have two specific economic regimes that are going on right now. You have reflation, that's where inflation's coming up and growth is coming up because people are pricing in those tax cuts Trump's you know, proposing. That's how you get the US equities exploding the upside and you get, of course, Bitcoin with the relaxed regulatory things. So you got a rotation going on. So people are benefiting from that particular portfolio. What gold loves is stagflation. That's where the inflation goes up. We'll get that, but growth's got to come down. That's what gold loves. So those two different things are fighting each other right now, and that's where gold really has its pressure. You want to be positioned for both because we're going to kind of cycle between them. So don't give up on your gold yet. Nice. Uh, like that really good assessment of the different regimes and where they overlap. Seems like another way to think about it is if inflation is powerful enough to get the Fed to try and act, then maybe gold buckles a little bit. But as long as we can kind of tiptoe, then you would think gold should have most of its uh, trends still. Yeah. There is about no possibility that the new administration will probably allow the Fed <laughs> to raise rates. I don't know. It's I'm just, so confused, not, though, because then, to be political. I know. But that man has Twitter. OK, right. And, and he, he loves low rates. Know. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's where I'm confused, because then it's actually uh, it's a really interesting thing to think about, because then they though said that Powell was to blame for inflation and then. Powell's cutting rates, so I don't know what they think he's supposed to hike. I have no idea, to be honest, like what their it, macro framework is, because I don't think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I know. So there's a couple things other people should know, too, is that yeah. the correlation between gold and different asset classes right now. So so the dollar and the S&P are very closely correlated right now, and they've been for about the last week. Same thing mm. with dollar and Bitcoin. Dollar gold has kind of flipped and gone where it's it's almost 100 percent inversely correlated. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to look for a dollar breakdown, maybe the S&P or Bitcoin to start to come off, and that'll reflate the gold market. We haven't mm. given up on gold. We just have a longer term perspective on it because we need that three month out kind of thought process there. So, again, you just have to have several of these asset classes line up. And like Ray Dalio said, you know, you can kind of build out a portfolio of things where something will be working in each one of these regimes. And then it's a matter of becoming, you know, is your um, is your position size correctly? So people just, like I said, I wouldn't give up on things like copper, silver, gold. I would just take down those position sizes until we get something of a consolidation and we start to work our way back up. Uh, well said. Uh, the other one, obviously, that I want to get your thought on is a Bitcoin crypto. Then if things need to consolidate, I mean, Bitcoin's Bitcoin's trying to go off on its own uh, path right now. So do we have to apply these same uh, notions to BTC or do you just no, wait till the so chart tells you? Your perspective on Bitcoin needs to be much longer in focus. We okay. believe that by the end of like 2025, you know, we could be seeing like 150, 200,000 hour Bitcoin because of the wow. fact that one, you have, it's still, I think, under participated in by the retail investor. The dips have been very shallow in nature, which means that people are coming in there buying at every type of 
uh, uh, correction that you get. And I just think that once the new administration, actually, if they are able to implement a few things where the government is holding custody of these things, they've got that fund, you know, Trump wants to target criminals. Why not take their Bitcoin and make that part of the strategic fund? I think they have 210,000 already. Then if they redo that banking um, regulation, they get rid of Gary Gensler. Those few things should propel Bitcoin futures higher. And I think Ethereum, eight to 10,000, some of these other smaller cryptos could really get a boost as well. All right, so it seems like don't mess with crypto at this point. Don't short it is right. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, yeah. I mean, again, everything is in you get you have to have a slice of all these different asset classes. And of course, the CME does have a micro Bitcoin contract, which is fantastic. One tenth of the size. Every thousand hour move in crypto is a hundred dollar move in your account in the Bitcoin. And then the Ethereum contract one tenth as well. But too way too small, in my opinion. So it's a thirty three hundred dollar um, full size value and you're only trading a tenth of it. So three hundred and thirty dollars. So maybe a small, smaller investor would go in and, and target the Ethereum contract. All right. Good stuff. Like it. Thanks. Appreciate Thank the you. walkthrough. Good stuff. Phil Striebel.